All right, welcome to VE. So if you followed the channel for a length of time, you know that I've had a few tutorials where I wanted to use my phone to share things with you or do some stuff, and I've been unable to. I've sometimes done it with screenshots and other stuff, but I really lacked a good way of recording my screen on my phone. Well, that's all changed today. I found a tool actually through Streamlabs where I can stream stream to something called an RTMP server and I was able to set up an RTMP server with Broxmox in a container. So first I want to show you guys my phone screen here and you can see my phone screen on the left hand side and we can actually look at the Streamlabs app and see it changing here. There is some delay as you can tell but we are able to see my desktop in live, move around just like we would on my phone, and interact with it generally just like a phone and see everything that's going on. So I'm going to move over to my desktop here at this point, and you can see that we have our Proxmox web interface up and going. And you can see a container here, container 101 in my case, called RTMP server. That's what's hosting everything that you just saw or done from my phone. Now, we're doing this, of course, with NGNX, and this is our test page for our server because we are still hosting a web page. And here's the NGNX. We're actually going to compile this from binaries, and we're going to include this package here called the RTMP module. So the first thing we're going to need to do is head to our Proxmox web interface and create a container. Now, if you haven't created a container before, what I just did there was enter a name, the host name, which is basically the host name for the server, but it's also the name that will distinguish the container by in the web interface and and a password and confirm the password. We're not using SSH keys today. Uh, that is kind of a security flaw, but we can get into that in another episode if we need to. Now we're going to go to templates and I want to use a long-term supported version. Right now, the LTS version of Ubuntu is 22.04. We could do this on 23.04, but if this is something that we're going to be using for a little while, it's probably best to do this on an LTS version, 22.04. Then we're going to use a drive. 8 gigs is going to be fine. And these use surprisingly little resources, but I'm going to give it 2 gigs. Uh, two cores and two gigs of RAM because, well, why not? Now, we're going to set DHCP. I'm changing my bridge. As always, you may not want to do that. Uh, you may not even have that option. I have a custom VLAN set up here where my Proxmox stuff goes, and that's what I'm doing. Now, we're going to leave DNS settings alone, and we're going to confirm it. I go back and forth on whether or not I want to start this on boot. We can't do that configuration just yet. You can see in the background the container is being built here in Proxmox and is now finished. Now if I went over to our container right here and went to options, I could start this on boot. And I don't know, like for me, I go back and forth. I don't know how useful this is gonna be or how often it's gonna be used, but I know it's gonna be off used often. And I wonder if I want to just have it ready to go and not have to log in and start it for some of the streaming I do. But um, that's definitely going to be up to you and how much streaming or how much even need you have for your cell phone or some of the other things you can do with RTMP. I'm only scratching the basic surface of this by using this for desktop capture and phone screen capture here in OBS for recording videos for YouTube. But anyways, it can be used for a lot of other things, and we've now made our container. The first thing we want to do here now that we've made a container is start the container and open the console. And now with the console open, we're going to go ahead and log in. Now, if this is your first time ever logging into a Proxmox container, we're going to log in with root and the password that we set up on that first initial screen. And you can see here, this is a pretty familiar experience 
clients with Ubuntu command line, the first thing I'm going to do, and we're logged in with root, so I'm not going to be using sudo, is run an apt update and go ahead and update my repositories to see if I need to install anything. This is an LTS version and it's been out for a while, so we will have to. And then I'm going to run an LPT upgrade y to go ahead and install all of those programs that we need to update. Okay, so now that we have all of our repositories updated and everything installed, we can head off to two separate websites. The first one's going to be Nginx, and this is where we're actually going to download the source code, and we're going to be using version 1.2. Two, four. And the other one's GitHub, and we're going to work with a repository here that's called nginx-rtmp-module, and we're going to have to compile that into the Nginx source code in order to be able to work with it and actually create our RTMP server. So the first thing we're going to do is right click here and we're going to hit copy address and that's going to get the address for the version of engine x we want and then we're going to head back over to our console here and we're going to type the command wget and we're going to paste that link in and hit enter now this took me a second to find here and so i'm just going to copy and paste the link in from my notes but we're going to use wget again to download the module from github and if you can tell we're at github and the same guy's name he is russian ngnx rtmp module archive slash dev zip and we can go ahead and download this and now we have both files so if we hit ls we can see both files here now we're going to need to start downloading some dependency software in order to start the process of compiling this code and we're going to start with three or four applications here that are going to be needed basically by default to compile any code. So we're going to use build essentials, libpcre3, libpcre3 dev, libssl dev. Let's go ahead and install them. Press Y to enter. Now we're need, going to need to install unzip, apt install unzip dash Y, and we're going to need to install this zli blg dash dev package as well all right so we should have all of the packages we need now to actually start the process of unpacking these applications and compiling them so we'll run an ls quickly to get the name of the first package and we're going to run tar dash z e x v f v f and the file name now you can see we created a folder and we're going to need to unzip the dev.zip file by using unzip and the file name running an ls can see that we unpacked the nginx dash rtmp dash module dash dev file that we downloaded from github so the next thing we want to do is head over to our nginx folder so we'll use cd and head to that folder and we can enter a command that's going to integrate the nginx module here with our code and and do the configuration so dot slash config slash slash with http SSL module add module engine X RTMP module dev so let's run that and that completed successfully so now we can run make to actually compile it and now we're going to run the command make install to actually install the program so if everything goes okay we can go ahead and, and start engine X by by running a command dash usr dash local 
dash engine x dash s spin dash engine x and this should start up engine x and if everything goes successful we should be able to actually get a web page out of it all right so now we'll head back to our web browser well just a minute we need to do one more command in our console since we use dhcp we need to find out the ip address so we're going to enter IP address, and that's going to spit out the address, 192.168.3.23. Now at our web browser, we can open a new tab and go ahead and enter that address, and we should get a web page. There we go. So Nginx is now up and running. Now it's not configured for our RTMP server, but it's up and running. Now we don't have to do anything super, super complicated to use this module, especially in the way we're doing. Now there's a lot more we can do with this module, including pushing out multiple streams to multiple different websites and whatnot. But all we're doing is pushing a stream to it so we can get it into OBS on our computer from our cell phone so we can record what's going on and on our cell phone screen easily and freely. I mean, there's software out here that'll do all of this that you can pay money for, but we don't want to pay money and we can do this for free using the tools we have on hand, being that we have a Proxmox server. So this is how we did it. So we're going to use nano and we're going to go to user local nginx config nginx.config and we're going to get a configuration file. Now this configuration file is basically set up right now to show the web Website that we saw in the web browser, which is the base, basic initial website for Nginx, we're just going to leave it alone. It, it doesn't really matter for us, so we're just going to scroll to the bottom of this file. We could create a new file if we wanted to, but there's really no need to in this scenario. And now we're going to paste in a few lines. RTMP, curly brace, server, curly brace, listen on 1935, which is the default port for RTMP, chunk size 4096, application live, curly brace, live on colon, record off colon, curly brace, curly brace, curly brace. And we're going to save this. And since this was compiled, we're going to stop this with user local nginx spin nginx dash s stop and again start it with user local nginx spin nginx so that should be up and running and we can head back to the web browser now nothing should change here if everything's working if it isn't working this page won't reload so we can just hit refresh and it reloads so we're good and now it's really time to start testing okay so we're actually here now at the stream using our new stream server but the big question is is how did we set it up so we're going to go ahead and go back to the configuration page and um, this is actually what it looks like by default from the OBS application. And there's some three bars up here um, in the top left-hand corner. And I apologize that you can't see where I'm clicking. I'm gonna do my best to describe it. And that's going to bring up this window here that you're looking at. From this window here, we're going to go to account settings and we're going to, at the bottom, click Custom RTMP Server, and that'll bring up this window. Now, I'll go ahead and unveil the stream key because it's kind of important for the whole process that we're going to talk about here. So for the stream, we're going to enter RTMP colon slash slash the IP address to our server. In our case, 192.168.3.23 slash live. That's always going to stay the same. Now for our stream key, it can be whatever we want. In our case, we're just going to enter test. So security isn't super important here because we're inside of our firewall, but OBS and RTMP are going to require something. So we give it whatever we want. Now this is going to be required later on that we know this stream key for making this connection. So we're going to
going to just enter something that we can remember. Now we can press save and this window's all done. So we can hit back. In my case, I then hit screen capture and next it asks me to pick out, I hit save and then I'm not going to do it now. <coughs> or I can actually do it now. And we're, it's gonna ask us to go live. And right where you see the um, red dot circle, we're going to click there and it'll send us live. Now the button will look a little bit different because we're of course live at the moment, broadcasting to the recording software. So now that we have that all up and running, we can actually head to OBS so now here at our desktop and our OBS view, we're going to need to configure that. Now this is my basic view. Yours is probably going to look different and don't super worry about that. But here under sources, we're gonna hit the plus and we're gonna hit new media source and we're gonna create a new media source. I could use my existing because it's pre-configured, but I wanna show you how to set up a new one. So we're gonna create a new one, hit OK. Okay, and then we're going to uncheck local files and we're going to enter rtmp colon slash slash 192.168.3.23 or the IP address to our server, and this is my IP address, colon 1935 because that's the port that we set everything up to work on, slash live, slash test, press OK, and hopefully we're able to make a connection, which you can see happening right here. So you're able to now bring in your phone screen into OBS so you can record or stream information from your phone with Proxmox and an RTMP server from Nginx. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video and it hope helped you with some of your own streaming projects and you enjoy the content that it's going to allow me to bring you in the future. As always, have a good night.